Glory to God in the highest, and peace on earth to those on whom his favor rests. Merry Christmas Eve, everyone. This is uh, Pastor Corey and the whole Smith clan here joining you uh, for our Christmas Eve service. And what a wonderful message that is from the angels on that, that first night. Glory to God in the highest, peace on earth to those on whom his favor rests. His favor rests with us today, this year, all the time, because Christ has come to be with us. And what a wonderful thing to celebrate today. Uh, we're glad to have you guys here joining with us in, in this way. Uh, folks are, are celebrating tonight in a lot of different ways tonight. We have some folks who will be uh, at our church facilities in person to, uh, to worship with our candlelight service. Some folks who will be uh, at home, maybe not uh, getting on, on tech things, but using a mail worship guide in order to, to join us in some way to be a part of the bigger movement. And then also we have some folks like you all who are, are joining us online in this way to center our Christmas celebration around Christ. And so what, a, what an awesome thing for us to do tonight. Uh, if this is your first time joining us for things, uh, it's, we're glad to have you here with us. Uh, here at First Brethren Church, we long to grow and to love and to share uh, in Jesus, to, to grow to be more like him, to, to love the way that he loved us, and to share that gospel with the world, uh, particularly here in Goshen, Indiana. So if you would like to connect with us in some other way, if you don't have a worshiping community already, we'd love for you to join us uh, sometime, and we can help you connect in some fuller way. So there's going to be quite a bit of symbolism tonight. Uh, throughout our service, we will have the, the lighting of our Advent candle wreath, which will, is a symbol of Jesus' eternal hope and joy and peace and love. Uh, we'll also have a, a bunch of carols that we'll sing, just like the angels sang uh, and, and announced the, the glory of Christ. We will sing uh, of the joy of Christ's birth. We're also going to have some readings of the Christmas story, much the same way that uh, Mary and Joseph may have shared the story of Jesus' birth around the dinner table and to, to family and loved ones uh, many times to, to, to continue to, to share about how amazing this event was and, and likely later share, shared with the disciples and others who came to know Jesus because it's fun to know how this amazing, amazing story started. Uh, we'll also light more candles later as a sign of Christ's light among us, the light that he gives to us. Uh, so actually, if you have any available with you at home, I'd encourage you to grab some candles for that portion as, as we gather together. Now, before we get started, we, we want to do something special to welcome you all as, as part of the family here. So some of you may have uh, not been able to gather with us or, or with others for worship in person for quite a while. And we want to share with you all some special faces and voices of folks that you haven't seen and, and the congregation sharing their favorite parts of the Christmas season. Uh, as they share, I wonder if you would share with us as well. Uh, if you're watching this on Facebook or on YouTube, would you take a moment and share in the comments, what's your favorite part about the Christmas season? What's your, your favorite Christmas movie, a favorite Christmas ornament, or, uh, or what's something that, that you just really enjoy, a memory that has been meaningful to you? We want to hear from you so you can engage with us as part of the family. All right, we're going to watch that video now, and uh, I hope that you'll share with us. Thanks. My favorite Christmas movie of all time, I think, is um, It's a Wonderful Life, and it has to be the black and white version. Okay, so my favorite Christmas movie has to be Elf, because Elf is a really good movie because it's super funny and who would have thought to put chocolate syrup on spaghetti? Not me. My favorite Christmas movies, I like all the Santa Claus movies. This has to go back to when my kids, Reagan and Jenna, were very young. And I think one of Jenna's first movies she got was called Annabelle's Wish, probably in VHS. It's about a cow that wanted to see a reindeer. Actually had a cat. We needed Annabelle. And also that Jenna watches it every Christmas and still makes her cry. One of my favorite Christmas movies is um, Christmas Carol. I think because it just showed how even how mean people can be and something can still touch their hearts. Uh, okay. So one of my favorite holiday traditions is baking and making uh, Christmas goodies. And I to play hide and seek. 
Our favorite tradition is to sleep in the living room under the Christmas tree on Christmas Eve. My favorite holiday tradition is when we go out and play the Christmas tree and we put the Christmas tree up and we put the ornaments on. A Christmas Eve service because kids probably came in their jammies. I love going to see Polar Express with you guys. I like to go get a Christmas tree. So, one of my favorite presents over the years was actually last year because it was a very, it was very much a surprise. Um, my girls and I had been to an antique store and I fell in love with this bench that was there. And I didn't buy it that day, but after I left I was like, I, I gotta go back and get that bench. So I go back to the store to get the bench, well it has a sold sign on it. So I was like, oh man. So anyway, then Christmas morning, my girls come walking into the house with this bench. <laughs> I think one of my favorite presents when Jeff and I were first married, he would always have a habit of guessing any gift, you know. And I was so excited because I had bought him a brand new winter coat, had it hiding up in our attic, and wrapped it. And Christmas morning, he opens up the coat and he yells and he goes, Well, what's this in my pocket? And he had found the coat and wrapped a necklace that he had for me and put it inside his. Code. <laughs> I think the favorite Christmas present that I ever had was when I was five years old. My father, being a carpenter, built me a little cupboard in the 40s when there was not a lot to be had and it was super, super special. Thanks so much for sharing with us uh, in the comments, and I hope that you all will continue to participate throughout this service as we have responsive readings and songs and, and other things that we can do to participate together. Uh, I want to ask us to go ahead and begin with a call to worship and a word of prayer. Uh, I'm going to start out. The words are going to be on the screen here, and you all can read aloud where you are the parts that are in bold. So let's say this together. This message we have heard and proclaim that God is light, and in Him is no darkness at all. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. So we're going to start by uh, lighting our Advent candle wreath tonight. Do you want to join me for this, bud? Mm -hmm. Come up on my lap. Mm -hmm. The first candle... <laughs> is the candle of hope. We have the candle of joy, the candle of peace, and the candle of love. And you know there's another candle that's in here that we're going to light later on tonight. It's a very special candle. But first, we're going to start by reading some of the Christmas story. We'll start by reading from the prophet Isaiah. I want to welcome our friends Greg and Deb Pollock to do our reading for us. Right, thank you. I read Isaiah 9, 2. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. And I'm reading Isaiah 9, 6 through 7. For us, for to us a child is born, to us a son is given. And the government will be upon his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of, of the greatness of the government and peace will be, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness. From that time on and forever, the zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. And it just gives us the hope of what's to come, you know, and and um, his reigning forever and ever, and we with him. Yeah, 
as Greg said, you know, just as the Israelites had hoped for this Messiah and Savior who would come and rescue, we now rest in this knowledge that what Jesus has done for us and this hope that he's going to come again and that he will put things right and we get to reign with him forever and ever for all of eternity. So we're going to sing a song now called O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. This song that uh, is laden with the hope of Israel waiting for their Messiah, just as we hope for the return of Christ when we will reign with him forever. So let's sing that together. again. And as we celebrate his birth today, may we continue to, to yearn forward for that day when he will come again. So let's continue to read now our scriptures and, and to read the, the birth story, the, the Christmas story, the nativity today. And so the, our friends Dean and Darcy Yoder are going to uh, continue on with Luke chapter 2. Okay. We're reading from Luke 2, 1 through 7. This is the birth of Jesus. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria. And everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth into Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. 
While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born. And she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no guest room available for them. What an amazing beginning. What an amazing story. Uh, and a humble beginning for our Lord as he came, as he was born into, uh, into this scene where he was actually, his first night was, uh, was sleeping in a manger. And uh, just join us as we celebrate that and uh, worship him that way. Thanks so much, Dean and Darcy. And you know, just as Dean said, there's something that's so humbling about the thought of our God coming to be born among us, to live with us, not just to be in human form, but to be born just like us in all the fragility of infanthood into a poor couple and resting in a feeding trough of all places. Uh, this next song that we're going to sing is kind of a lullaby, uh, Away in a Manger. Let's, let's sing this song as a prayer, a prayer of gratitude for the God who is near to us in our most vulnerable places. God is good, and we are so grateful for our Christ who draws near. Let's continue on and to read uh, the, the nativity story as we find it in Luke chapter 2, verses 8 through 15. Uh, Ken and Paula Metzler are going to read this for us. I'm reading from Luke 2, 8 through 15. And there were shepherds in the same country abiding in the fields and keeping watch by night over their flock. And an angel of the Lord stood by them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. And they were, and they were afraid. And the angel said unto them, be not, be, Do not be afraid. Behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all the people. So there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this is the sign unto you. You shall find a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among the men who, is, who he is well pleased. And it came to pass when the angels went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us now go even unto Bethlehem, 
and see this thing that is come to pass, which is the, which the Lord has made known to us. These shepherds had to have been terrified with all that was happening. We have the benefit of, of technology, knowing that things like this, there's got to be something behind it making it work. But these guys had no knowledge of that at all. And yet, even being terrified, they wanted to, they were compelled to go tell it to everyone. Our friend Mr. Ken is right. Those shepherds must have been really terrified and startled when they saw uh, that message on that first night from those angels. But they were so happy because they heard that there was a Savior who was born. And there was favor for them. God is with them. And he's with us too. That's really good news, isn't it? Yeah. And so they wanted to go and see for themselves and to tell everyone the good news. Let's sing that, uh, about that ourselves too. Does that sound fun? All right. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what he had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. As a mom, I can't imagine the feeling of being overwhelmed that Mary must have felt. Um, being told in the beginning that she was going to be carrying the Messiah and then hearing it from the shepherds, you know, kind of affirming that, hey, your child is very special and is going to carry the sins of the world. I just, I can't imagine. Okay. Thanks so much for that word, Deb. That was a, a, a great reminder. I mean, it would be crazy to have been Mary and to be a mom, the, the mother of the Savior of the world. I, I can't even comprehend what it would have been like to be Joseph at that time. Uh, it would have been really crazy. But hey, guys, I got a message uh, for us for the kids specifically right now. So uh, you guys like Christmas, right? There's lots of cool stuff about Christmas time. What's one of your favorite things about Christmas? What do you think? All the things mostly presents. Mostly All the things presents. mostly presents. And uh, who do we hear about who brings us presents? Santa Claus. Sissy's kind of dressed like Santa right now. I didn't say. I wanted you to try and guess. No. Well, I think Sissy's dressed like Santa Claus right now, and that's kind of fun. 
But I want to talk a little bit tonight about why, even though Santa's really cool and presents are cool, Jesus is even better. So, like, did, what do we know about Santa? He does. He checks. A, he has a list. He checks it twice to yeah. find out who's naughty and, and nice. Presents. And he brings yeah. presents to the, the the people who are good. Yeah. Well, Jesus doesn't watch us and keep a list of who's naughty and nice. Jesus, uh, Jesus helps us to be nice, doesn't he? He helps us to be good on the inside because of the way he changes us. And uh, Santa brings gifts to the good boys and girls, but Jesus is the good gift. He gives the gift of his life so that all of us can have real and true life. And finally, so Santa gets through uh, the night when it's cloudy and stuff. How does he get, how do you know the way to go? He has a... Um, Rudolph and a sleigh. Rudolph and a sleigh. So he has a reindeer who has a shiny nose who lights the way. But Jesus, he is the true light. And he's the way, the truth, and the light. He doesn't need a shiny nosed reindeer. He is our light in the darkness. That's pretty cool, huh? All this stuff about Christmas time uh, that we celebrate with our traditions. This is a weird thing. In darkness, how does Santa store a seat? I don't know. Apparently because of Rudolph. But... But Jesus helps us to see in the darkness. All this other stuff about Christmas, the trees, the presents, the cookies, all the other stuff is really cool. But the reason for all of this is Jesus and what he did. That he, it's his birthday. We remember how he came into the world to, to be with us and to give us new life. Now this year's been kind of crazy sometimes. There's, we've had to stay in a lot more. There's been some sad things that have happened. There's been hard, difficult things that happened. And sometimes it feels dark. And that's actually kind of appropriate because we still live uh, in a time where there's a lot, a lot of darkness in the world. And yet we know that Jesus is our light. We're going to do something to kind of remind us of that tonight, okay? So remember I was telling you about turning all the lights off? We're going to do that now. So whenever Adam and Eve sinned, they brought sin and darkness into the world. And all the light that we have, it left. Should we turn the other light off too? Well, you ready? It's gonna get dark. It's gonna get dark. It's dark, okay, isn't sit down. it? Sit down, guys. Yeah, turn those and those and those lights on. So yeah. after the fall, the world was plunged into darkness. And the weight of sin, it hung over all of our eyes. And yet even in that darkness, there was a light that shined. All of the other lights and those lights and those lights. Whoa! In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and that Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through Him all things were made. Without Him nothing was made that has been made. In Him was life. And that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it, us. So Jesus was that light that came into the darkness. And Jesus gave the light to his disciples too, and he taught us how to have a real life. Now we have some candles for you guys to do too. <laughs> We'll light our candles of hope and peace and joy and love again, too. <laughs> Here, sit down, guys, so that the candles are showing. There you go. So we see already when it was dark, 
and it's still brought new light into the world. And when we shine our light to others, it helps to bring a little more hope and joy and peace and love. That's pretty cool, huh? So let's sing about um, that light that came into the world. Ready? Silent night, holy night, all is calm, all is bright, round yon virgin mother and child, holy infant so tender. Sleep in heavenly peace. Sleep in heavenly peace. The Word became flesh and made His dwelling among us. We have seen His glory, the glory of the one and only Son who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. That glory was Jesus. So just as, as we leave into this silent night, let's let Jesus be the Lord of our heart and to abide, help us to abide in his holy night and to treasure his word. Can we say Merry Christmas to everyone? Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas.